Hello everybody, <laughs> welcome back to my channel. I have a lot of things to update you guys on, so I figured instead of just sitting down and catching you up, we could wash my bike together. This is actually the first wash of the season, and that's awfully naughty of me, but I can, uh, I can let you know what's been the story with the Ducati, what I planned for it, and then all sorts of other things that I wanted to chat about while we work on this. So first, let's just get her wet, and then I'm gonna use this like soap gun thing that Dan got. So this should be a little bit fun. You know, we had a different nozzle on this that was a little more gentle. <laughs> but because of the soap add-on, I've got to uh, manually be gentle. Sorry I'm not doing this in a, in a bikini. Maybe next time. All right, so firstly, what's the deal with my bike? So you guys, might have heard in the last video if you watched it or a couple videos ago that at the same time I had no brakes no brake pressure on the front and rear and then I also had like a little severed wire up near the handlebar and the fact that that happened all at the same time kind of kind of geeked me out I'm not gonna lie to you I was a little just surprised and I thought that maybe my bike was tampered with and I just felt a little paranoid um, so I did get on the phone with my maintenance dudes and the guy just said just flush out your brakes and then hit me up and we'll fix the wiring thing so i was like okay <laughs> uh, we got something in the books for him to look at the wiring stuff and after i bled my brakes uh, i had pressure back so it was just a coinky dink and nothing to worry about <laughs> so we've got pressure back on those um i just flushed them myself and he said that it's honestly very common with Italian bikes. Uh, he said that it happens with the Prilias all the time that they lose brake pressure over the winter. And then also I'm realizing this is the first season I've ever had my bike in a non-temperature control garage. And I think maybe just that temperature fluctuation over the winter time had an effect on the brakes. So have the brakes back, love it. Um, and then the thing that they had to work on for me was the brake light that's what the wiring was to i had been looking at some i don't know how to do this i had been looking at some uh diagrams with my dad and he's not a mechanic and we were looking at ones for the wrong bike we were looking at the scrambler 1100s and we thought that it was like an abs system thing gotta be smarter than the device all right we're on there oh i have to fill the rest up with water i think or do i i think i do um <laughs> so i had to get the whole little brake thing brake light thing repaired i had no i hadn't even realized it when i was checking on my bike that i had no uh, light for the front brakes i only had rear brake lights yeah they fixed the front brake light thing and when all is, when all was said and done with parts and labor it came out to like 270 which is a lot they had to do that because there wasn't enough wiring uh to just solder it back and dan dan and i could tell that as well it broke like just so close to the little console thing and then actually they they seem to have improved it it's way tidier and it's just like mint condition now so there should be no future problems with my front brake lights all right that looks right i'm like scared to use this i saw dan using it the other day so it should be fine <laughs> but okay i hope that's enough oh i could always read the directions god i am one of those people that just does things apparently and ask questions later i don't know seems fine all right let's try this out oh that's so nice it's a bubble bath <laughs> Tell me if this is a bizarre American thing, but have you heard of a foam party? I heard about those during college and it's like, I don't even know how to explain it. Someone just explain in the comments, but this just uh, unlocked that realization that people have foam parties. Uh, it must just be a young American college thing, I'm hoping, because it just seems gross, <laughs> even though it's like soap. All right, that looks pretty good to me. So that's exciting. The bike is all 
all better. She's in mint condition. She's happy. She's healthy. Healthy. She's thriving. And I do have some plans for the summertime. For sure, for sure. I want to change out the, um, the levers. I bought those like six to nine months ago and those still haven't been done yet and i'm probably gonna do levers and then dial in you know the tension there and make sure i like all that i have some maybe slight cosmetic things and i don't know i've been toying with the idea of a new seat i actually do really like my seat i think my stock bite has an excellent seat people ask me often if it's aftermarket because it's a really gorgeous seat and it's pretty comfortable um, the stitching is wearing away a little bit at the parts where my thighs rub on it. <laughs> so it's getting some natural signs of wear. And I thought it could be fun to just have like another seat option because the seat is really easy to change out. Obviously just pop it off. So it wouldn't be hard to switch between two seats. But aftermarket seats are really expensive. <laughs> they are like at a minimum 300 bucks it seems. And at the top end like 600 or so, at least from what I've seen. And I'm hoping, I don't know, we'll see if maybe one of these brands could help me out. Otherwise I just like won't cause it's an unnecessary upgrade. That money would be better spent on other things. So, you know, I'm not made of money over here even though I have a Ducati in it. Seems like I have to be. But that's what I got going on. Yeah, in terms of my professional things, obviously I do web development if you didn't know that. And then I also run my own online motorcycle safety gear store called Great Lake Supply Co. where I sell lots of armor and I sell a couple select European brands of uh, safety gear as well. And now I'm offering Pando Moto gear, which is super exciting. And I've worn them for a long time. I think I've, I've worn Pando before I even started the YouTube channel. Um, they reached out to me a long time ago and sent me pants and I love them so much. I actually kind of like grew out of the first pair of pants they sent me because it's been some time <laughs> since, I, since I've been riding. And now um, I really often ride with the Kusari, Kusari pants and I'm 90% sure I'm gonna be stocking those on my site uh, after I see how the launch goes with some of the other styles. Um, those are my most worn pants next, most worn pants next to the lazy rolling ones. Um, I really often wear the lazy rolling black ones and the lazy rolling uh, army green ones. But check out the website. There's some really excellent options for cooler weather riding, a really fancy pants mesh jacket that I think you'd really like. It's an investment, but it's really worth it. It's AAA rated, a really high safety rating when it comes to motorcycle safety gear. It's also highly ventilated and intelligent and lightweight and, and like water resistant as well. So check that out if you're ready to invest in a really amazing piece. But I'll just tell you now that it's not super beer gut or beer belly friendly. <laughs> and um, I think the hoodies are way more size inclusive, <laughs> if, I, if I could say so much. So choose a size up if you want to uh, if you need more room in the tummy on the mesh jacket. Otherwise, if you're super fit, you can just go with your regular size. And I'll be trying that on soon. I didn't initially get it in my size, but now I'm curious how it'll fit. And when it comes to this gear stuff, which is really exciting, um, I'm gonna be vending an event. So if you live in the Midwest, you should check out Brewtown Rumble. It's a ride-in vintage motorcycle show also a fundraiser for the build moto program and i was involved in that program a little bit a couple years ago and i just really believe in it they help uh high school students get involved in motorcycle building and they uh, build a custom race bike so they didn't have that when i was going to school so it's a really cool opportunity and the event is a fundraiser for that it's a free street festival to attend but they've got raffles and stuff and then of course the vendors uh, pay in like I do. I don't have any special like wheel cleaner right now. So I think I'm just gonna try to blast this again and hope for the best. So yeah, that's most of the stuff I wanted to catch you up on. It's been quite a busy summer so far already. Lots going on, a lot of fun opportunities. Obviously you guys saw me do 
the Ducati trip and I had a phenomenal time on that. I went to Florida with Honda. But yeah, the Ducati trip was really special, obviously because it was international and because I own a Ducati. Um, it was for the new Scrambler lineup and it was just so cool. So um, I've been able to like unpack the whole experience a little bit more now that I've been back from it for some time. And I suppose I can like catch you guys up on like what I've been thinking. One of the big differences between the new Scramblers and my Ducati is that they've got those console screens on them. You can like toggle between all these things in the interface. It's full color. I, for some reason right now it's escaping me. It's not LED, but it's something that performs better than LED in these like different light conditions. But it's a really like impressive piece of technology and it works really well and it's cool and all. But from a personal standpoint, in terms of like aesthetics, it's definitely not my speed. And Dan feels the same way. That was one reason he really like, he really likes his MT-09. Obviously there's a lot of reasons, but part of it is that it doesn't have like a freaking iPad mounted to it, <laughs> no shade. But you know, I kind of get nostalgic for the fact that I don't want to just have that screen association. And we like this analog look. I'd rather my bike have a Tamagotchi attached than an iPad. That's one like maybe gentle roast that I'd, I'd make of the bike. Um, and when it comes to aesthetics, I prefer like the full throttle and the night shift. Look at my bike. Of course I like, I prefer those. So yeah, the console screen is one thing that I'm like, oh, conflicted about. And I wonder if they'd ever give options where you could just choose something else or if there's like an aftermarket like mod you can make. I don't even know. It sounds like we're just, we just have to have them um, whether we like it or not. So yeah, it's too bad. Maybe I'll give the whole thing an initial rinse and then I'll do the other, the other wheel. This is not a tutorial. Honestly, almost none of my content is a tutorial. Uh, you know, we're not going for perfection here. We're just going for something nice. But yeah, I think I'm gonna finish this off and then wipe her down off camera. Thanks so much for spending a little time with me. A little TLC on the bike, sure she's appreciated. And get some of that old muck off of it because it's been a, it's been a little while and it's been dusty. My poor bike has been dusty. So if you wanna come meet me and hang out, uh, go to Brewtown Rumble, that's June or Sunday, June 11th in Milwaukee. I don't know if I'll make it out to any other um, in-person vending experiences, but I am figuring out how I can do more in-person stuff with you guys and um, especially with people who want to buy from the store because I like in-person retail and there's just so much lacking uh, now in this digital era, especially when it comes to motorcycle gear. And I like offering like boutique small brands who just do a really great job. Sure, they're not cheap, but honestly, I think a lot of them are, are very much worth the price. And when it comes to your safety, it's worth investing in. And you know, it's not just a, another pair of fashion jeans. And honestly, sometimes fashion jeans can cost as much, but they don't even have Kevlar lining. So they might as well. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Ride safe.